Welcome back to Switch of South Africa. This is season one, episode nine. And today I've got this beautiful Peugeot 2008. And first things first, I think we need to talk about the front look design. Um, looking at the car, I must say, Peugeot really have outdone themselves. Um, the front end of this car, for me personally, this is the best feature. Um, with this one, this is the 1.2 GT line. So you get the three LED lines, like the cloth design and the jaw going down. So it looks very menacing. Um, even at night, that's where the Peugeot comes alive. The lights play a huge role in this instance. This being the GT line, you get the 17 inch rims on the car. The car comes a standard with keyless entry and you don't have to take the keys out of your pocket or even do anything as I'll demonstrate right now. As I move closer to the car, the car will unlock. The further, the further away I move from the car, it will lock itself. I don't need to do anything. Right now, just pay attention to the mirrors there. The car is unlocked. And then I, I just easily just open the door. So now I'm closing it. Then I just step away. You'll hear it make a sound. There you go. The car locks itself. I don't need to take out the keys, anything. Since this is the GT line, it comes as standard. There is no tint in the front, but it comes up into there at the back. I love and this effect that Peugeot has, has done to, to the mirrors over here. The body lines on this car are very aggressive. I'm not too sure if you can see them, but there's a line going here. And then when it gets here, they split into two different ways. Same thing on this side. Like it's very, very bold. It's a bold statement from Peugeot. I like the, the design. They've really made this car look as aggressive as it's supposed to seem, you know. Taking a look at the back of the Peugeot 2008 GT line, at first I wasn't too sure about the, the black trimming over here because this, this whole part is black. I wasn't too sure. But um, when the car came and I saw it in person for the first time, I'm like, okay, you know what? Pictures don't do justice. That's just the keyless entry um, playing its part. Um, so I saw that. I'm like, no, this is a very beautiful car. Um, there is, for me personally, there is no fault. On the exterior the car looks beautiful on the outside the inside This being the GT line comes with the 10 inch infotainment system and the all new iCockpit 3D design in front of the driver. You now join me inside the Peugeot 2008. So first things first, this is a 1.2 litre turbocharged, produces 95 kilowatts and 230 newton meters of torque through a six speed automatic gearbox. This specific model has that. Um, the gearbox is it's okay. It, um, you get used to it. You drive properly with it. Um, it's the gearbox isn't quick. At the same time, it isn't slow. It's not dual clutch quick, um, but you do feel the lag um, when you just want to like do a quick overtake. When you flow it, it does take time for it to find the right gear. But once it gets going, it gets going. And the power in this car. Being a 1.2 liter, I expected, I personally expected that the power will be like, once you put your foot down, the power is there. Being a small engine, it will give you the power there. But with this one, you get the power. Once it changes into the next gear, that's when you get the power. Like, you, you foot down gear one, then when it goes to gear two, the power is there. Gear three, the power is there. You know, so once you get, get into the next gear, the power. So it's quite quick. Um, it's a perfect cruiser. It handles roads very well. It's a smooth, it's a smooth ride. Um, so this has been the GT line. Um, this car's priced at four hundred and seventy-nine thousand rand. Um, this model literally has every single thing. The only thing that it doesn't have is a uh, this is the panoramic sunroof. That's an optional extra of twenty-one thousand seven hundred and fifty. Um, personally, I would get it. Um, I really love the the, the panoramic sunroof any car actually that has the option to opt it out different opt it so in this one i'd opt for that and then the car i'll be done the car has heated seats driver and passenger seats 
um, it has a 10 inch display it has the new 3d eye cockpit um, design in front of your infotainment system the thing that I don't like is the fact that the steering wheel is small so when you jump from when you jump from any other car in the world and you're jumping into this you you're not gonna get used to the steering wheel like it's very small but once you drive this car for a day or two you actually start to begin to like the steering wheel so the disadvantage about the steering wheel and the 3d cockpit design is the fact that for you to see the the digital display up front the steering wheel needs to be very low because once you put it higher you won't see anything so that's how i set it right now it's low some people don't like putting the steering wheels low but i also don't like it but you put it low you get used to it the claim fuel economy of this car is 6.4 i'm currently averaging 8.4 um it's a very fuel efficient car i should say when you're driving it properly see like how i'm driving right now in the review the car will save you a lot of money it's very fuel efficient but once you start putting your foot down driving quite fast or just like you know robot to robot dashes or just putting your foot down in general that's when the car starts becoming a heavy car um you'll end you'll end up not knowing where the petrol went so that's the thing with this one advice there's no need for you to drive this car fast or anything like that unless you just want to do a quick overtake but driving it normally, you, you're going to enjoy this car. It's a, it's a smooth ride. I, like, I can't believe how smooth this car's ride is. Like, uh, I didn't expect it. I thought it was going to be a hard ride because um, it's the first Peugeot I've ever, dri I ever, I've ever driven. So I thought the ride would be quite heavy. It would be quite bumpy, you know. But no, it handled all these roads that have been too very well. Um, like I said, it's a perfect all-rounder. This Peugeot 2008 is a very, very... Um, interesting cruise control um, at first you won't get it right I can pay you I can give you this car and say get in the car drive it get the cruise put the, set the cruise control you won't get it right you need to literally fidget around the, with the cruise control first before you get it right but once you get it you will know what you're doing so this car on any road you drive on it knows the speed limit um, I think it, re it reads the signs around so it knows the speed on that road so the cruise control when cruise control is activated for example let's say i'm doing 100 and i'm on the n1 or any national road and the speed limit is 120 it shows me a sign that says mem i think that says memorize the, the speed limit so if i double t double click on the on the cruise control feature it'll mimic the the speed limit you know i'm passing a 60 sign Yes, it reads the signs. Uh, when you pass the sign, it reads the sign. So it will mimic the speed limit. So I could be doing 40, and in that in that zone is an 80 zone. Once I press the cruise control feature twice, once to say you want it, two to confirm, it will immediately increase to the speed limit and it will stay there. So then if I'm on uh, 120 in a 120 zone, then all of a sudden it drastically changes to a 80 zone. It will change and then it will tell you should I mimic the the speed limit so you press you press it twice then the car will slow down itself like very quickly for example at that like it will start breaking down shifting very hard even but not like hard where you start leaning forward you just downshift you feel the downshifts you know so I like that a lot because you don't have to stress about oh I'm on cruise control I have to slow down and once you do slow down and you're gonna go back to where you are it does pick up very quick so i like that um i think that has to be one of my favorite features in this car the the cruise control how you how easy it is to use once you've known the car or once you you know what you're doing with the car so this car is fitted with lane keep assist um the lane keep assist on this car it doesn't keep well from what i have experienced with the car over the past six days um, it doesn't keep you like in the lane itself um, It'll keep you in the lane, but it'll serve to the left or right and then once it feels it's going over It'll bring you back and then it'll, it'll do that once Then the second time if it feels that your hands aren't on the steering wheel, it'll tell you put your hands on the steering wheel so I tried it, but I didn't like literally just keep my hands off the steering wheel like hands free um, I just like kept my hands like this in case if something does happen I can have time to react so I let go of the steering wheel the car I think for like 20 seconds or so it was going straight 
and then it started leaning to the left and then it read that it's going over the white line so it brought me back that was one so when it brings you back it brings you back and then it obviously gonna bounce to the other side of the of the lane so it brought me back from the left it bounced on the right and when it bounced on the right my hands were still not on the steering wheel like fully so it bounced on the right and then once it bounces for the second time the car will start beeping telling you please hold the steering wheel so, so now we're at that part where we talk about three things i like three things i don't like and you know we always start with the bad three things i don't like the steering wheel first is like it's small but once you get used to it it's okay but i don't like it reason being this is not the only car you'll drive so when you jump into another car the steering wheel feels, feels very weird so that's one thing i don't like about this car the second thing i don't like about this car it has to be the lane keep assist because it doesn't fully keep you in the lane it just bounces you off from the lane to lane and the third thing i don't like about this car it has to be the seat belt i don't like how that you can't adjust it on other cars you can adjust this up and down so the seat belt it works perfectly for people that like to sit high so that it, people that sit high the seat belt doesn't like hurt them here so with me uh, i sit very low uh, i prefer sitting at the lowest setting and mostly any car that i've ever driven i prefer sitting in the lowest setting now onto the good part three things i like three things I like number one I think it has to be the drive of the car how it, it's so smooth um, turning circle it turns now it's like the drive uh, this has to be the smoothest car I've driven in, in a while you know um, I don't want to say the smoothest car I've driven but it's been the smoothest car I've driven in a while um, the steering wheel feel is very light it works perfectly with the drive of the car so that that's one that I like two that I like it's not in any particular order I like the all these three things equally to what I like is the cruise control how it reads the, it tells you the speed limits and then you just you should just say mimic the speed the speed limit and then it'll go at that speed I like that cruise control uh, the third thing I like at night the ambient lighting oh my lord this is such a great place to be at night I'll be putting shots of the car after this whole thing it's just a very beautiful place to be inside this car at night it's, the car just comes alive at night like literally during the day you can see the lights but they're not out there because it's too bright but at night this car is perfect for driving at night honestly because the screen the 10 inch screen comes to play the 3d at cockpit comes to play so and i like how you can you can like you know personalize the 3d uh i cockpit design to how you want it to your settings this car has three profiles you can literally can literally just maneuver between profile one two and three one could be your father one could be your mother then three could be me or your husband wife kids you know what i mean so i like that when you pop the car into reverse the car has a reverse camera um it's not high definition quality it's just okay but the thing that i like the most the car has a, a top view uh, so you can literally see the car from the top um, when you're reversing parking it'll show you the parking lines as well so you can i can literally put the car into the parking spaces without having to look at the lines because the lines will literally pop up right here on the on the infotainment system so i was very shocked that a car for 479,000 has that because it's a car that costs double the amount that don't even have that so it's a very nice feature um, you can control the reverse camera three ways it's the it's the normal reverse standard camera you can 180 view then you can do like a top view so if you're reversing and there's a curb the car does automatically switch up but if you want to switch it yourself you can just tap that and then it will show you how far the curb is so it's three features normal reverse cam 180 view 180 view meaning it shows you straight it shows you on the right it shows you on the left so i can reverse it could be a wall here but it could be reversing but i would know that there's a car that side or there's a car that side so it's a nice feature and then the the third one is the the reversing and then the, the curb is coming uh, the car has android auto apple carplay the car has type c charging on the left no more usb charging on the right it has two usb ports at the back so you can literally charge four devices at the same time and it also has if you're old school you know car charger it has a 12 volt socket I feel like I've mentioned everything. So this car has so much and it's value for money. Honestly speaking, it's value for money. I, cause I was, personally, after I saw the specs and everything on this car, personally, I thought this car was gonna be in the 500,000 rands. Cause I literally even asked my friend, I'm like, dude, get in the car. We got in the car, he saw the car. 
he liked it. I'm like, guess how much the car costs? My friend is like, it costs around five fifty. I'm like, not even, dude. It costs like four eighty. So it's it's good value for money car. Personally, I'd get this specific one, just like this. The only thing that I'd add is the panoramic sunroof. I just like the panoramic sunroof. Every car that has an option, an option to get a panoramic sunroof, needs to come with it with the panoramic sunroof. This car is, has a very loud, loud noise, um, like engine noise. My dad is like, are you sure there's a petrol engine? He was, he was convinced it's a diesel, you know, because it's quite loud. So even when you put your foot down, it does, it makes this nice sound. I personally like it. It's not a quiet car. You put your foot down, you could feel that, okay, now you're moving because of the sound the car makes. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to hear it, but I'm going to do it right now. Like, <laughs> like you hear the sound, like it's there. It's refined. Do you know? So... But all of that said, thank you for watching Switch of South Africa. I'm Nikki Nash, and I'm still gonna come with many, many content for you. I have a very, very interesting video after this one for you guys. So keep it locked. I appreciate the support that you guys have given me, and I'm still gonna grow. So click the subscribe button, like, comment, share, and your thoughts. Um, what you'd like to see on the channel, tell me. I'll try and make means to make it happen. So until that happens, we're signing out. Switch off South Africa.